Amen. It's good to see all of you here um, in the parking lot with us. You tuning in with us on the um, by way of internet. We appreciate that very much this morning. And we hope that the Lord's been good to you. You allow Him to be good to you this week. He said that He came to give you life and uh, you more abundantly also. So this morning I hope that you uh, uh, come ready to seek a blessing um, from the Lord. And I want to take a moment before we get jump in right into the service, before we pray. And uh, I got a special prayer request from a dear man that each of us know, and he's my friend. Um, his name's Brother Larry Key. I don't you remember him. He's uh, a preacher, uh, him and Miss Marlene. They are a part of Rock of Ages Princeton Ministries. Brother Larry has come and preached for us several times, and he's always a blessing. Uh, they're in, they go into the juvenile prisons. Uh, but Brother Larry has been texting me as of late um, about his health. And um, he's asked me to um, keep it to myself until yesterday. And so uh, he and I have been uh, trying to pray. It's not just me, many other preachers as well. But uh, he hadn't told publicly anything yet. But yesterday he ca uh, texted me a long text. And he's going to tell his church family and his pastor. I asked him to share with the church openly and publicly. And so Brother Larry Key has been diagnosed with chronic um, myeloid leukemia, and um, which is a big deal. So he's got to take medicine, and when he takes the medicine, they hope that it'll go into remission. That's everybody's hope, and that's everybody. Um, but they threw him, and the the tests that they've done and the procedures that they've been doing, and him. Uh, going back and forth to the doctors, trying to diagnose him. They said that they're optimistic. They say in two to three years um, that they should see a result um, and it should be gone. Uh, so it's just going to be a journey. But he said this. Um, he said, me and Miss Marlene have been settled with this, that uh, should the Lord provide this in our lives, uh, give this to us in our lives, that God's got somebody he wants us to meet that has leukemia or um a doctor or somebody in our path and that's his outlook with this which I think is very different than most most people would be in a different fashion so please remember brother Larry Key if you've got a prayer list if you would uh, write him down and add him to and today if you'd like to start the new step new stepping stone and Lord what can I do well, you've got something to do you can pray for a missionary God put him back uh, where he's supposed to be. He's still able to go to the prison. Um, so he's excited about that as well. Of course, he's not contagious. They'd be more harm to him than he to them. So remember Brother Larry Key today when you pray. And he's my friend, and uh, he's a good soldier for Christ. So I want to give him a church time and by way of internet as well that we could... Call his name out to the Lord and mention him in prayer, okay? So I hope you've had a wonderful day. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And then these young ladies is going to sing for us today. And then we're going to try to preach, okay? So you just pray with us. And let's all pray together uh, right now, okay? Almighty God, we do love you. And thank you for your many wonderful love and blessings. God, thank you for life and health and strength. And dear God, we know that we are in measure. Lord, we live in America God, we've got clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. God, we, um, I'm sure we have food that's uh, piled up in the pantry. Lord, if not, we uh, have a way to go to the grocery store. And things ahead of us are just all set in order. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us spiritually today, that we'd be so concerned as we are physically, that our spiritual pantry is full with you. And Lord, if there's too much in there that ought not to be there, that you'd help us to empty it out. Get those things, get rid of them, God. We put new things fresh things back in there. Lord, when we have it home, and Lord, we don't eat it all before it spoils. God, we don't keep it. We And Father, today, I pray you'd help us to, to lay aside every sin and weight which does so easily beset us, Lord, and help us to run the race you set before us. I pray for Brother Larry Key this morning and, and then Miss Marlene that you touch their hearts and his body. I pray, dear God, Lord, you already know. Uh, Father, I pray in heaven that you uh, put your hand upon him. And I pray you'd help us as a church to, to get behind him and to support him in prayer, Father, today. 
I pray God you'd open our eyes and our ears, touch these young ladies as they come to sing and help us as we try to preach. That it be a blessing to our church family and Lord, to everyone that will view this by way of the internet. That it would find a place in each of our hearts. And dear God, if there be one here in our midst, uh, uh, under our voice, God, today, uh, by way of internet or in person that has never accepted you, Father in heaven, I pray there be enough conviction today that it be real enough today, Father. Lord, if it would find a place and a seed could follow, Lord, and they would see the need to accept you, Father. I pray in heaven, Lord, you'd help us today. We could just get a hold of you and you get a hold of us, Father. But you raise a head around our hearts and our minds and help us, God, just to be still and let you do what only you can do today and speak to hearts and save souls. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things, Father. Amen. All right, girls. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was Blessing to you. And uh, this morning, it, I don't know what to say if it's not. I hope it's uh, stirred your heart today. Today, I wonder if you brought your Bibles with you. You turn with me, please, to John chapter number three. John chapter number three today. So this morning, if you want to, we've checked it and we've tried it out. Um, you can turn on your uh, radios uh, to 88.3, the FM transmitter. It's working. We tried it out earlier today. If you want to do that, or you can listen. Um, just by open air. Uh, so, John chapter number 3 this morning, uh, we're going to be in verse number 14. Uh, I hope that this is a familiar passage to you, and that you can say that today. If not, um, I hope that you'll give an opportunity. Let the Lord do something in your heart and your mind. So, John chapter number 3, verse number four, 14, excuse me, look with me there. John chapter number 3, verse number 14 this morning, okay? Okay. John chapter number 3, verse number 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God. Okay? So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Almighty God, we do want to come to you and thank you once again for another day to be alive. Thank you, Lord, for life and health and strength. God in heaven, we ask you that you would do what only you could do this morning. 
Father in heaven, I pray that you would take your message, take your word, and God, may we apply it to our lives. Lord, it would make a change within us, even us Christians. God, it would clean us up. And Father in heaven, it would help us to draw closer to you, that when we see others and we speak for you, Lord, that the words we speak would be enough of you upon it. Dear God, that it would make a, a change in our lives. Lord, as you tell us in Matthew, that uh, let our light shine in this world. That they, this world may see our good works and glorify you, which is in heaven. Dear Lord, I ask you today that you touch my mouth. And Lord, that you give us only your words and through and by you. Lord, each thing will be done what you want to be done. Lord, nothing else. Raise our heads around our hearts once again. Lord, we need you today. For these things, Christ, we ask in your name. Amen. This morning I want to share with you, and I want to talk to you about this morning. I don't know if it, I don't know how to just want to give it to you. That's all I know to say. Uh, whether ever how it comes out, I want to share with you again the seven things that Christ uttered on the cross. The seven utterances I want to say this morning from the cross. The seven utterances from the cross that Christ gave. Number one this morning, the first saying that he said or the first words he gave on the cross was in you can find it in Luke 23 there in several that some are all in the gospels but Luke 23 verse 34 it says father forgive them for they know not what they do and of course this morning it's going to be very simple and that's what I'm interested in and see salvation is simple today you must believe that God gave a son and that Jesus gave us life will you check this on the that God gave a son and Jesus gave us life and that he done it for God's honor and for God's glory. And that, no, that, that he was the only perfect sacrifice. And through and by this, uh, that our sins, that we can have redemption. Meaning that God forgives us of our sins. So today, this, this morning, what I want to say is that if we've ever done anything wrong, if we've ever said something we shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't say it, if we've done something we shouldn't have, if we've went somewhere we shouldn't have, if we've thought about something, if we've gotten angry, and we, uh, whatever it might be, if we've lied, if what, what, I have no idea what it is. And I can't begin to think of and try to name, nor do I want to name, all the things that we could or, or, or did do wrong. But all I want to know is this morning, say this morning, that when we know that we've done wrong, that we've uh, sinned, for all have sinned. Let's go ahead and get that out there. Every single one of us. There was none righteous, no, not one. There was only one perfect person uh, that walked this earth, and that was Jesus Christ. He's the only one. And He came and bled and died for us, uh, for God's honor, for God's glory, that He could be the perfect, perfect sacrifice to redeem us from a place called hell. So that we could be saved. And then when we receive salvation, we accept Christ uh, that He can also uh, place and give us an atonement for our sins after we're saved. Because all we like sheep uh, will and have gone astray today. Once we're saved, that's not the end of it. We must continue to live a life that's pleasing to Christ. And that's for us Christians and, and for those that are lost today. But I want to, uh, more importantly today, church, if you're here and you're saved, I, I would have you to help me to ask the Lord to speak to your heart, that He can speak to you today, but most of all, the very lost. That you pray right now in your mind and on your heart for those that are lost and under the sound of my voice, by way of internet, that have never accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, uh, that God's Word would find a place and they would see the need to accept Him today. That conviction would find a place that's so heavy that they can't get away from it or get over it, uh, but truly accept Christ as their Savior. For he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What is he talking about? Where they beat him uh, with the cat of nine tails, where, they, where the cat of nine tails ripped the flesh from off his back. Where he was beaten beyond recognition, and the crown of thorns was made, and that was planted and pushed down within his skull that the blood ran down and that, and that they stripped his clothes from his body that they uh, pierced his side and then they nailed his hands uh, to a cross then he nailed his feet crossed his feet, nailed his feet to the cross and the whole time he's, uh, uh, he never uttered a word the Bible says that he came as a lamb before slaughter, never uttered a word and all he could think about was Father forgive them for they know not what they do Well, 
For today Christ loves me and you as much as he loved Adam and Eve when he first made them in the whole wide world. He loves it. He loves the whole uh, wide world today. It's not his will that any should perish, but all come to repentance today. He told Nicodemus in the beginning of John chapter 3, simply, you must be born again today. Nothing else can get you to heaven. John 14 says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me today. It's the only way. It's the only way today. And we can still re receive forgiveness. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The first saying from off the cross. The first saying that Christ had on his mind during this event, during this life-changing event for everybody in the whole wide world was, Lord, forgive them. Lord, forgive them today. Forgive them, Lord. Number two this morning. The second saying from off the cross. You can find in Luke chapter 23, verse 43. Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So he uttered salvation. So he gave forgiveness. The second saying was, thou, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He gave salvation. He spoke salvation. Just like he's, uh, God spoke uh, this world into existence, I read it again this morning, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form and void today. The darkness comprehended it not. He separated light from darkness, and he went on to, uh, to make the rest of the world, and went, how he did it, he spoke it into existence. And then Christ spoke salvation on the cross, as well as he spoke forgiveness. Are you with me today? He spoke it today. He spoke it then and he's speaking it now. You can have forgiveness of your sins. You just must simply ask him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved today. And you can receive forgiveness. And salvation. So what are you saved from? You're saved from a place called hell. From a, a place of eternity. A place where, uh, where, where the worm dieth not. Where Satan will never die. And anybody that is, and will ever go to hell, uh, they will live there forever in anguish. You'll never die. You'll never get over the pain. You'll never get over the smell. Uh, you'll never get over uh, any, any of it today. So, hell is real. And once you're there, there's no escaping it. It's too late. We have no promise of tomorrow. We don't know from this moment to the next. The rapture of the church can happen at any moment, at any time, at any place. Would you not just want to be ready? Saved or lost, if you're lost today, you've never accepted him, would you not want to just be ready to know in your heart that if you was to die right now, uh, that you'd, die, you'd be in God's presence, in Jesus Christ's presence, in all of his glory. Would you not want to have that peace? And all you must do, all you have to do is just ask Him today. But church, if you're here today and you're saved, you want to be right with God and you want God to be happy with you, all you just have to do is ask Him, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned, I've done wrong. If you regard, if you keep that sin, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord God will not hear me. So lay it down today. Nail it to the cross today. He'll utter salvation in your heart. Boy, I remember the time that I accepted Christ. And I asked you to forgive me of my sins. And he breathed sweet peace into my heart. And he came within my ears and I heard it. And it relieved such a burden for my soul. When he breathed it to me, he spoke it into my heart. And boy, it's still real today. It makes no never mind. He said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You're forever sealed. It's sealed until the day of redemption, he says. John chapter number 10 says that when you accept him and he puts you in the palm of his hand, that you cannot be plucked out, can't be taken out, can't be retrieved by nobody, by nobody but him today. He spoke and uttered forgiveness. That was his heart. Willing to forgive. Secondly, willing to give a way of escape, salvation. Thirdly, this morning, you can find this one in Luke 23, verse 46.
father. Well, excuse me, let me. Uh, that's seven. That's the last one. Number three this morning, you can find in John 19, 27. Woman, behold thy son. So behold thy mother. You can find that one in John 19, verse 27. So he uttered the concern for his mother. First, we have forgiveness. Second, we have salvation. And then he uttered a concern for others. What did the Bible say in the Old Testament? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon this earth. He still honored his father for he was on the cross. <laughs> he was honoring his dad because his dad asked him to go and he went. Father, if it not be my... Lord, if it, 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 nevertheless, Lord, if it's not your will that I go to the cross, Lord, I don't want to go. No, I don't want to have to go through this. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he went to the cross because... He knew that he had a place there because his father asked him to go because he was the only begotten son and he honored his father to the cross. And then he honored his mother while on the cross and made sure that she would be taken care of and seen that she was taken care of from the cross today. And so today, if you'll accept him, you'll receive forgiveness. And he'll, he'll speak salvation to your heart. There'll be a concern for others. The Bible tells the New Testament, you know, you can know that you're saved. You can know that. How do you know that? Because you have the love for the brethren. You can know that you pass from death unto life because you have the blood, the love for the brethren today. He spoke forgiveness. He spoke salvation. He spoke concern. Utterance for his mother. Number four this morning, Matthew 27, verse 46. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is this, the utterance of anguish. For he feels it. His body feels it. That flesh, he feels this pain. He's been hanging there for some time now. Uh, his body, his back pressed against the back of that post. Uh, his, his body's getting tired and he's, he's drooping down because he, his fleshly body don't have the strength to, to stand back up. You ever felt in your life, your spiritual life, your physical life, that maybe you, you just don't have the strength to stand back up and, and to face the things and you're trying your best and you've stood up many times, you've walked many miles, uh, you're not you're not an a, a immature Christian, but you, you're trying to stand up, uh, but you're feeling like, a, Lord, I need your help, and Lord, why? Don't forsake me now. I don't know how much more of this that I can take or go on or uh, endure or, Lord, I don't understand this, but he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Lord, help me to stand back up until the end. Help me to stay the course. Help me to walk the way. Help me to have the joy unspeakable and full of glory in my heart. Let come what may. Lord, help me to look at this world. And still, you remain upon my face. My countenance remains with you, Father. That I'm not a fake person. Uh, that no matter what happens or what goes on, but God, you're still real. And you can do all things. You make all things. And because you, all things consist and exist, Father. And it's of your mercies that we're not consumed. How about it today? How about it today? Church, those that are saved, Lord, I can't handle this on my own. And certainly you can't. That's why he made us. He made us, every one of us, each a certain way to help us to understand that we can't understand or take this world on our own. We must need him. He knows that today. But he surely helped you. You ask him. You give it to him. You lay it at his feet. You nail it to the cross. Get it under the blood today. Number five this morning. John chapter number 19, verse number 28. Our Savior, he spoke on the cross. 
I thirst. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. In the midst of all he's trying to do when he gave forgiveness and he gave salvation, he's cared about his mother, he's acknowledged his father, and Lord, I need your help. But this body is overtaken. This situation, Lord, and my body is thirsty. And I need your help. And the only thing they give him was, was God. <laughs> give him something bitter. He gave him no water. Nothing to drink. When he needed help and he wanted help and he asked for help and he begged for help, the only thing they give him was something that nobody else would want. <laughs> and so many times, how do we, how do we treat the Lord? We ask and we beg and we give him the, the leftover change in our spare pocket or in our sock drawer that just whatever's left, we put an offering plate or our spare time, we give it to him. How, how about giving him your, your first fruits of that own increase, that, that own increase that you wake up early in the morning and you greet him first thing, that he's the last one you speak to when you go to bed at night, that when you have a problem, you, you do all you can do and ask for help. But he said, with all your heart today, love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. For I'm thirsty, Lord, and I want you to be in my life and I want you to be in my heart and I want you to come to church with me and I want you to be a part of our minds and protect us and keep us. Lord, I want you to save our children and I'm thirsty, Lord. I'm thirsty. See, this was the utterance of the spoken word of physical suffering. For he felt it. Not only did he experience it, he felt it. I'm thirsty. Number six, he said in John 19, verse 30, it is finished. It is finished. For he had conquered the cross. This is a short message, a long experience on the cross. We're talking hours. We're talking hours. And I don't understand. I don't know how. I don't, I don't have the capability. Do I have the words or the right vocabulary to try to describe to you, to try to preach to you? And the Bible says only other foolishness of preaching that all men come to know God. I don't have the words to, that, to express to you. But what he went through on this cross, nor do I have the time for us to experience or to even get an inkling of what happened on that cross. But all I know is what his word says. He said it's finished. Number seven, he said, Luke 23, verse 46. Father, into my hands, into your hands. Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. He's trusting. He's trusting. He's trusting in his Father. Lord, I'm giving it to you, this fleshly body. And he's trusting this for what reason? A reunion. A reunion. So this morning, this is Christ's words, his spoken words on the cross, his utterances. Now, whether they were clear or not, I doubt it. I don't know, but I know it was clear enough that they can hear that it was recorded from these men in God's word. But Christ from the cross, he gave forgiveness. 
If you're here today and you've never accepted Christ, He will forgive you from the things you've said, the things you've done, from the worst things you could ever uh, imagine today. He'll save the dirtiest, darkest, and he'll save the youngest and the sweetest. It makes no never mind. He came to seek and to save that which is lost today. It's not his will and any should perish, but all come to repentance today. He'll give us forgiveness, but you just must ask. And he'll speak salvation into your heart, and you can receive it today. And then you can be concerned about others. Why do we come to church? To be encouraged. To be lifted up. To have a church family. To experience God's family. That's what's among us. But the only time we're getting this is on Sunday and Wednesday. We ain't getting much. It's up to us as Christian people, as members of Shady Grove, to have a daily relationship with Jesus Christ. I know every day can't be like Sunday, but every day must be must stand on its own. Monday, there must be a time of greeting the Lord and seeing the Lord and worshiping the Lord within your heart. You need to see Him for who He is on Monday. And on Tuesday, you need to see Him for who He is. For He's given you every breath and every heartbeat. And on Wednesday, you need to see Him for who He is. And what he's done. And on Thursday, you need to see him. You need to greet him. You need to love him. And on Friday, you need to see him and remember him. And on Saturday, we need to see him and greet him and love him and tell him that you need him and that you want him in your life. And Sunday, Lord, I want you to go with me to the church house. I know you live in my heart. Lord, I want them to see it on my face and on my mind. Lord, I, I want to be real. Lord, I, and I, I, when I come to the house of God, whatever said, whatever sung about, I want it to stir me up. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Church, we can have as much of the Lord as we want. We can have as much of the touch of God as we want. It is up to you. That personal relationship, it is up to you. Your marriages will be what it is. Whatever you put into it. Your friendships will be whatever you put into it. There's got to be a give and a take. There's got to be forgiveness. Because we're not perfect today. We're not perfect today. There must be forgiveness. There must be love. And you'll never make it without Him today. Now, many people might disagree and say, Boy, I've made it this far without Him. Well, you'll not make it the rest. And on your dying day, you'll wish you had accepted Him. Because the moment you take that next breath and you enter into heaven, uh, hell's gates for the rest and for the rest of your life and all eternity, you'd have wished you'd acknowledge to God. There's one sin that's unforgivable. That is denying Christ as your personal Savior. Never accepting Him. How about it today? How about it today? Would you choose Him today? Saved or lost. So preacher, I'm saved. How do I choose him? You choose to walk with him. You choose to love him. You choose his word. You choose a moment of every day in the morning. You choose a moment of every day of the evening. Before you close your eyes. Because every heartbeat, you're supposed to give to him. In mind and in heart. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. How about it today? Let's bow together in prayer. Almighty God, in your name, I ask you. Lord Jesus of heaven, that you touch our very hearts. Dear God, that you would help us as Shady Grove Church for our children's sake, for our family members, our friends, this community. Lord, for North Carolina and all the United States, Lord, all the world. I pray, Lord, you'd help us to be men and women you'd be pleased with. Lord, I pray, God, today, they'd be one here. It's in the sound of our voice in your midst today. 
Or if these words have found a place in our heart, we could see the need to accept you. Father in heaven, I pray that you'd give us, help us to, to share with this world the peace that you can give if they accept you as their Savior and Lord of their lives. Father in heaven, I pray for those that are viewing by way of internet remotely today. I pray, Lord, that their hearts will be encouraged. And they also, more than that, be convicted, Lord, to uh, Christian people to walk closer and to ask for forgiveness. That lost people, uh, whoever they might be, Lord, that's never accepted you in salvation, Father. They forget about everything and be so concerned with their eternal destination, their eternal home. If we was to die right now, where would we spend the rest of our lives? Father in heaven, I pray that you'd help us to be an encouragement. To remember that we've got listening ears and open eyes. And that are gazing and looking at us. At our homes. Our friends. and This whole wide world. Help us to represent you the way you be pleased. God, touch our church. Help us to make good decisions for you. Help us to choose you. Every morning. Every evening. And everywhere in between. God, I love you today. For these things, Christ, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Church, I appreciate you coming and being with us today. This is what God's laid upon my heart. If you're here today and you need anything, you got a question, you got a prayer request, whatever it might be, you know how to get a hold of me, I hope. Uh, you can do it by internet, by cell phone. Uh, if you're on the internet, all you got to do is message me. You understand how. But I would love to be a help to you. If you got any questions about being saved and how to be saved, I'd love to show you that most of all. More than anything else, I'd love to show you how'd you come to know Jesus, my Savior. I love you today. It's good to see all of you. Be careful. Don't forget on Wednesday morning, we'll be tuned in on Facebook and YouTube um, early in the morning. It'll be there for you to view all day. And I hope that'll be a blessing to you well. If not, we'll see you back here next Sunday at 10 a.m., okay? Y'all be careful. God bless you. We love you. You're dismissed.